Hello everyone. My talk today's topic is ISO, that is International Organization for Standardization. I planned this topic as per PCI syllabus, and this particular subject is there in the sixth semester. So, the according to the syllabus, I have divided the topic into two videos: ISO Part One, which will mainly deals with introduction regarding ISO, and ISO 9000. Whereas the second part in the second video, I'll cover ISO 14000 and the some comparison study. So let's begin with when we talk about ISO, we have everyone we have heard about ISO. So what is ISO? ISO is nothing but International Standard Organization and it is the world's largest developer and publisher of international standard. It was formed in 1947 in Geneva that is in Switzerland. The International Organization for Standardization is an independent, non-governmental international organization with a membership of 162 national standard bodies, where the official languages for ISO are English, French and Russian. The main concept is to determine characteristics of the management practices that must be standardized. Main motto of ISO that is a standard organization that means it mainly deals with the management practices that which must be standardized that should have some standard its main objective that is to provide products that is customer focused or oriented to produce products that meets customers requirement to enhance customer satisfaction for the products and their trust in it to enhance quality management to enhance effective and efficient products design and development Main difficulties what ISO is facing that many countries initiated and implemented their own national quality policies. ISO's two main features first one is that internal quality audit at predetermined level, and secondly, continuous monitoring of quality system. Now, let's come to the benefits. If an organization is ISO certified, what are the benefits it can expect? ISO international standards ensure that products and services are safe, reliable and of good quality. For business, they are strategic tool that reduces cost by minimizing waste and errors and increasing productivity. They help companies to assess new markets, level the playing field for developing countries and facilitate free and fair global trade. So when we talk about ISO, they have different standards. So ISO, they have different, different popular standards. When we talk about when the term come ISO 9000, that means it is mainly deals with quality management. What about whenever we talk about 40, ISO 14000, it is nothing but environmental management. ISO 45001, it deals with occupational health and safety. ISO 27001 it is deals with information security ISO 26000 it is deals with social responsibility ISO 5001 generally deals with energy management ISO 316 is, it is nothing but country codes ISO 4217 currency codes ISO 639 language codes ISO 22000 food safety management ISO 20121 sustainable events ISO 13485 medical devices, ISO 31000 risk management, ISO 37001 anti bravery management system, and the last one that is ISO 8601 date and time format. So these are the gem most popular ISO standards. Our target is to know about ISO 9000 today, that is quality management. How quality can be managed in an corporate organization or in an organization next according to our syllabus we have also iso 14000 which generally deals with environmental management so when we start with iso 9000 first we need to know what is quality management system as iso 9000 deals with quality management now quality management system that is nothing but qms Quality management system defines and establishes an organization's quality policy and objectives. When we talk about these ISO, it all comes under quality assurance. That means 
quality whatever we are providing it should have assured that means it should have a highest quality so quality management system generally defines and establishes an organization's quality policy and objectives first point under that it also allows an organization to document and implement the procedures needed to attain these goals goal is nothing but quality next a properly implemented QMS ensures that procedures are carried out consistently that problems can be identified and resolved and the organization can continuously review and improve its procedure, products and services. And the last important one, it is a mechanism for maintaining and improving the quality of the products or services so that they consistently meet or exceed customers implied or stated needs and fulfill their quality objectives. If we look at quality management system, their main important motto is to maintain best quality and to keep customer satisfaction. If you look at the point number seven, second point, if you look at, if any pro, if you are performing any procedures, if there are any problem is arising that need to be identified and resolved so that we can get the better quality product that is all about quality management system now let's begin with iso 9000 as we have already seen iso 9000 deals with quality management the iso 9000 family of standard is related to quality management systems and designed to help organizations ensure that they meet the needs of customers and other stakeholders while meeting statutory and regulatory requirements. Next, ISO 9000 deals with the fundamentals of quality management system, including the seven management principle on which the family of standard is based. If you want to maintain quality management system, we have to follow these seven quality management principle. First one that is quality QMP1 that is quality management principle one customer focus second one leadership third one engagement of people fourth one process approach fifth one improvement sixth one evidence based decision making the last that is seventh one relationship management. Now we will see one by one each principle and its key benefits first one customer focus. The primary focus of quality management is to meet customer requirements and to strive to exceed customer expectation. Suppose if I talk about pharmaceutical company, customer is nothing but the users who are receiving the drugs as everyone look for the best quality and pers every customers have some expectation. So primary focus of quality management is, is on the customer and to fulfill customer's expectation. If we can do that, what are the key benefits we can get? That is increased customer value, increased customer satisfaction, improved customer loyalty, enhanced repeat business, enhanced reputation of the organization, expanded customer base, increased revenue and market share. If we can feel, fulfill customer's expectation, these are the benefits an organization can expect. Next, leadership. Leaders at all levels established unity of purpose and direction and create conditions in which people are engaged in achieving the organization's quality objective. Now, for achieving quality objectives in an organization, who need to work? All the employees need to work to achieve the quality policy. So, if the leadership is not proper, achieving that quality policy is not easy. So leaders at all levels establish unity of purpose and direction and create conditions in which people are engaged in achieving the organization's quality objectives. If leadership is good, these are the benefits we can expect. Increased effectiveness and efficiency in meeting the organization quality objectives. Next, better coordination of the organization's process improved communication between levels and function of the organizations. Next, development and improvement of the capability of the organization 
and its people to deliver desired results. When you see that in an organization unity is maintained, automatically results will be the best one. Next, engagement of people. Competent, empower, empowered and engaged people at all levels throughout the organization are essential to enhance its capability to create and deliver value. Its benefits improved understanding of the organization's quality objectives by people in the organization and increased motivation to achieve them. Enhanced involvement, involvement of people to improve enhanced improvement of people in improvement activities, enhanced personal development and initiatives and creativity, enhanced people satisfaction, enhanced trust and collaboration throughout the organization, increased attention to shared values and culture throughout the organization. Engagement of people. Engagement of people means we need to engage people, competent people, empowered at different, different levels at all levels throughout the organization. So we need to uh, identify the competent one and we need to involve them into different activities. As a result, we can expect these are the key benefits. Next, process approach. Consistence and predictable results are achieved more effectively and efficiently when activities are understood and managed as interrelated process that function as a coherent system process approach now if we consider a pharmaceutical company they have different different department qc qa production technology tra transfer management whatever every there are different departments but there should be an interrelation between all the department then only process approach can be successful so the key benefits are enhanced ability to focus effort on key processes and opportunities for improvement, consistent and predictable outcomes through a system of aligned processes, optimized performance through effective process management, efficient use of resources and reduced cross-functional barriers. And the last point, enabling the organization to provide confidence to interested parties as to its consistency effectiveness and efficiency these are the key benefits what we can we can expect when process approach is proper when there will not be any barrier between interdepartment the point number five under principle five that is improvement successful organization have an ongoing focus on improvement improvement as everyone needs improvement Key benefits, improved process performance, organizational capabilities and customer satisfaction, enhanced focus on root cause investigation and determination, followed by prevention and corrective actions, enhanced ability to anticipate and react to internal and external risk and opportunities, enhanced consideration of both incremental and breakthrough improvement, improved use of learning for improvement, enhanced drive for innovation that means when you talk about improvement the important term is innovation we cannot remain on a fixed place every day we need to improve same way if an organization want to grow improvement is necessary quality management principle number six that is evidence-based decision making one of the most important criteria decision based on analysis and evaluation of data and information are more likely to produce desired results. If you want to make any decision, you should have a backup data. Just like this, I cannot decide. If I have the data, I can decide. Key benefits, improved decision-making process, ability to demonstrate the effectiveness of past decisions, improvement assessment of process performance and ability to achieve objectives, improved operational effectiveness and efficiency, Increased ability to review, challenge, and change opinions and decisions. And the last point, under last principle, that is relationship management. For sustained success, an organization manages its relation, relationship with interested parties such as suppliers. First one, enhance, under that key benefits, first one, enhanced performance of the organization. Enhanced performance of the organization. 
and its interested parties through responding to the opportunities and constraints related to each interested party, common understanding of goals and values among interested parties, increased capability to create value for interested parties by sharing resources and competence and managing quality related risk. And the last one, a well-managed supply chain that provides a stable flow of goods and service. So these are the seven principles under our ISO 9000. If we want to, ISO 9000 generally deals with quality management. If I want to maintain quality, these are the seven principles we need to follow. First, starting with customer focus, leadership, engagement of people, process approach, improvement, evidence-based decision making, and the last one, relationship management. So I have explained in details. Now, next, we need to know that ISO, when we talk about ISO 9000, it has some series, 9000, 9001, 9002, 9003, and 9004. So when we talk about 9000, what is main 9000, what is its main function? Or if we talk about 9000, what it means? It generally means explain fundamental quality concept and provides guidelines for the selection and application of each standard. When you talk about 9001, model for quality assurance in design, development, production, installation and servicing. 9002, model for quality assurance in the production and installation of manufacturing system. 9003, quality assurance in the final inspection and testing. ISO 9004, guidelines for the application of standards in quality management and quality systems. As a whole, ISO 9000, by combining all these, they are maintaining QMS, that is quality management system. Each series have different role. If you look at 9001, it is, it is mainly based on design, development, production, installation and servicing. If you look at 9002, mainly production and installation of manufacturing system. 9003, final inspection and testing. 9004, guidelines for the application of standards in quality management and quality system. Now, most important thing is that ISO 9000 and 9004 are guidance standards. They describe what is necessary to accomplish the requirements outlined in standards 9001, 9002 or 9003. That means 9000 and 9004 are the guidance standards. They will guide what need to be followed to accomplish the requirements outlined in the 9001, 9002 and 9003. So this is the end of this particular topic. So here, what we have mainly seen, first we have started with what is ISO, how, where it is formed regarding ISO introduction we have given, its objectives, its two important features, then benefits, then we have looked into different ISO popular standards, then we have come into the most important that is QMS, that is quality management system, then main, mainly we have concentrated what is ISO 9000. And what are its seven principles? Then we have seen what are the different ISO standards, that is ISO series. This is these are the topics we have discussed in this today's lecture. Next lecture, I will come up with ISO 14000. And finally, I will wind up this particular topic. Thank you. Hope you will like it. Please give your feedback. Thank you.